Good morning, ladies. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous sunny day here, and we're supposed to be like 70. I'm so excited. Finally, an end to some of that cold weather that we've just been plagued with this spring. So today, as um, I promised, I was going to do a tutorial on how I created this um, these faux patinas on um, not only the the unplated unplated brass pieces that creating with details carries, but also on the molded pieces from the Prima molds that I created and I showed you in a brief tutorial how I how I did the molds. So today I'm going to show you how to achieve these patinas um, and as I said in the other video you can achieve these patinas on just about any surface. Um, these are the pieces that I molded yesterday very similar to this well it is the exact same thing this is what it looks like when you start and this is the uh, colors that I chose in the patina. So I, I molded one of these and then look at this gorgeous piece. This is also one of the Prima molds that Creating with Details carries. And I don't, can you see the detail in that? It is just absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm going to be doing these in a color that kind of works with the decor that I'm I'm working on for my bedroom. Um, so we're going to be doing these in a different color than what I did with the other ones. And then this is another piece that I molded. And just look at the detail in these. It is amazing. So the first thing that you want to do, because these are made of clay, and clay is a porous substance. So in order to achieve the um, patina, you need to seal this. So the first thing that we're going to do is to take some gesso, which you can also get with at Creating with Details, and I'm just going to put on a coat of gesso to seal it um, so that we can proceed with, with the patina, because if I didn't put the gesso on here, uh, it would not come out as even. It would be blotchy and uh, just not as uh, the same oh finish that I would like to have so and I and I learned that by trial and error got in a hurry and decided oh, oh I don't need it's white I don't need to do that well it didn't turn out the way I wanted and I had to start all over again using the gesso to cover up what I didn't do the first time so just a little tip don't get in a hurry, just go through the steps because it definitely is worth it in the long run. So I'm just coating this. You only need one one, you know, decent coat, not thick, because you don't want it to you don't want it to stick in all those beautiful details that are on these pieces. But just enough to make sure that you have it all covered. I just absolutely love this piece. This is the first time I've uh, worked with this piece and I want to put this on a mirror that I am doing the uh, chippy paint look on for my bedroom and I just thought this would absolutely be beautiful on the top of the mirror and when I get that done I'll share that project too but for right now, I'm just kind of working with the elements to get it ready when my bedroom is, is ready, which I hope will be soon. My husband and I are redoing the entire house. We bought a uh, fixer-upper, and we're still trying to fixer-upper it. Okay, so... I'm just going to rinse out my brush real quick and then I'm going to use my heat gun to kind of um, dry that up a little bit quicker just for the sake of time. Okay, so my brush is all cleaned up. So I'm just going to hit this with the heat gun. It doesn't take a long time for it to dry. And that's another reason I say don't put on a real thick coat and you'll be waiting forever 
you go on to your next step. So, just will dry very quickly and it's, it's a great humidifier um, for all kinds of pieces and I forgot one. See how I am? I wanted to show you how you can unify pieces and I forgot to do the metal. Airhead. That's okay. At least I remembered before the video was over. Again, this is a piece of the unplated brass and these pieces are gorgeous. Um, people, I don't think, realize the uses for this. Like, for instance, this would make a gorgeous cuff. These do bend, even though they're, they're very sturdy. If you take your time and just gradually, like I took, um, I think it was like a soup can, because I made one. I don't know where it is right now, but I did make a cuff using um, one of these unplated brass pieces. And I just took a soup can and just gradually bent it around that soup can. And once you get that shape, then you can shape it around your wrist. Just It takes a little bit of time, but trust me, it is well worth it when you're done. So again, just going over um, this brass with the gesso. And you can see already, just with the gesso, how it takes all these pieces and makes them look the same. And when you're doing the faux painting, you can use, or the faux patina, you can use several different things. Um, I used, uh, I've used paint, just regular acrylic paint. And I will grab that piece to show you. I should have had it here already. But again, obviously the brain is not engaged because I forgot to do this. Um, but you can unify your pieces. And I, I've used um, the uh, Gilder's Paste, which is what I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to use today, the Gilder's Paste, to give that patina look. Or you can use regular acrylic paint, paints, which I did use on these pieces. This is where that, that green patina came from. Um, so you can use regular acrylic paints. Let me just grab that other piece that I did. Sorry, ladies, I should have been better prepared. This is a piece that I did um, last year for Creating with Details using, again, this is the uh, unplated brass. And I'm not sure if this piece, I think it is, I think this piece is still available. But all I did was I, I painted the brass black first. And then I just started layering on different uh, colored paints. And I used a bronze and I used a gold. They were all the metallic paints. And just kept layering it until I achieved the look that I wanted to get. And so that's just another option of how you can patina a piece if you don't have um, like the what is it, the rub and buff or some other kind of um, like Gilder's paste, something like that. You can achieve it with simply acrylic paints. It just takes a little more effort and a little more time, but I just wanted to show you that example of what you can do. So back to what we're doing here. Um, I just want to make sure that I have these edges all covered. Now I'm going to take my heat gun, and probably these are dry. And just dry this. And just be cautious when you're doing this on metal because it does get really hot really quickly, um, especially if you're using an actual heat gun. Um, it does tend to get hot. I'm just moving it out of the paint. And you can see how quickly that's drying. It does not take much time at all. So you can uh, mold your pieces and get your, your metal pieces um, and just cover them all with gesso and kind of start up an assembly line 
um, for projects. You can do that ahead of time and just have them all done. Now, if you're going to do them ahead of time, especially on the metal, I would recommend that once you're done, and I did do that on this piece, um, because it's metal, uh, I would recommend that you put a sealer on it just to keep it from scratching because it's metal, it will scratch eventually. Um, so just to preserve your piece and the work that you put into it, I would recommend that you do a sealer. You could also do that on the uh, clay pieces, but I don't really think it's necessary to do that. But if you want to err on the side of caution, I would do that. Now I used a, um, on that piece that I just showed you, I used a matte sealer rather than the gloss. Um, but that's a personal preference, you know, whichever one you prefer. Okay, so we have these pieces ready, and I'm just going to let that metal piece cool off for a second. And I'm going to wipe my matter up a little bit because I don't want the um, white paint mixing in with the next color. So I'm just going to wipe this off really quickly. I've got to get one of these magic mats. I know that's not the name of them, but that's what I call them because I just think this is one of the greatest inventions since sliced bread. But mine is beat up. And it's been well loved. And that's, it, there's just, oh, I just love them. I like to have this over the surface of my entire desk. So that no matter what I did, it was covered. Okay. So, the next step, and I'm going to work on this one because, I, like I said, I have not used this one yet. And I'm kind of excited. So, this color that I'm using is uh, a blue. And I may end up mixing um, some white with this. I don't know yet. We're just, we're going to experiment together. But basically what I did on the other piece is I took the color that I wanted to show through and I just painted the entire piece. As you can see, the bottom layer, which on this piece was this green, isn't highly visible. So I'm not overly concerned, well maybe a little concerned about this brightness of this blue um, at this point because it is going to be covered with other colors. And I do want in the um, details, I want that blue to sink in there. Look at all of those little curly cues and all that gorgeous detail. I do want that blue to sink in. Because my bedroom is kind of, um, well, the colors I want to use are this and, and some, you know, some of the light greens and maybe some pale pink. Um, luckily, I have a husband who doesn't object to my shabbiness, or I would be in big trouble. One of us would be in big trouble. I don't know which one, but one of us would be in big trouble. Because I can't get rid of my love for shabby chic. Okay. That one's covered. I'm just going to plunge ahead with the blue because that's what I have out here and that's what I had in mind. And we're going to make it work. One way or another. Even if you have to play with it. Excuse me, I need a drink. Excuse me. <coughs> I have a nasty um, sinus issue, so you'll have to forgive the choking and the gravelly voice. As I was saying, even if it takes a little bit more effort to achieve that, uh, that look, you can do it. That piece that I showed you with the, um, that I used the acrylic paints on, that was several coats, I want to say probably six, um, going back and forth with the colors until I got it to look the way that I wanted it to look. 
And you can see how easily now this paint is going over the surface and not soaking into that clay. And that's the reason um, for putting the gesso on as a sealer on the porous surfaces. And I used it on the metal just to unify the colors. You know, so I had a base of the same color in order to make them all look the same when I got done with the patina. And you could use any color, any color you want. Um, when you start this out, you could even use uh, like Lindy sprays or some of the other sprays um, that, there, that are out there. You could use a metallic uh, base for this. Um, I, I haven't tried it, but I suppose even like if you took the piece because it is porous and maybe used a little uh, household stain, I'm going to have to try that um, to get that wood look. That might even work too. So that's going to be a future experiment. So I'm just moving these out of the way. And just really quickly painting. I know I'm looking at this blue and thinking, ooh, I don't like it. But we're going to like it when it's done. I promise. And if I really didn't like it and wanted to use a different color, um, you could just let it dry, go over it with a couple coats of gesso, gesso, and voila, you're back to square one and try another color. It's really that easy to work with these pieces because even if you don't like something, you can fix it. Okay, so I'm done with the blue. Now I'm going to hit this with, <clears throat> excuse me, the heat gun again. And when you're doing, when you're using a heat gun of this type, you want to keep it away from the surface, probably like four or five inches or, or you know, six inches. Because if you get it too close, it's going to heat up that paint and it will start to bubble. Um, and you don't want that because you want your piece to look, you know, smooth and blemish free. Although I did do that on a piece with the heat gun and it, it, it bubbled up and when it settled, it kind of gave it a, a really cool texture. So sometimes happy accidents do happen. We didn't intend for it to come out that way, but sometimes those accidents turn out to be a pretty cool technique that you never would have thought about otherwise. So don't be afraid of uh, making a mistake because that mistake could turn out to be something pretty cool. And you can see how quickly these acrylic paints dry. It takes really no time at all for them to, uh, to dry up. So, I'm just going to make sure I'm not going to touch that one because that's metal. Yeah, see, those are dry already. All right, our next step is to take some of, I'm just going to scoot this one over the way so it cools off a little bit. Just start with this piece right here. Again, I'm going to clean up this paint because I want to transfer colors where I don't want them. And you can see how, if you don't have one of these, oh, get it. I'm not even using water. I'm just really wiping this off. And I'm out of paper towels, so I had to get grab my handy dandy rags that we all have in our in our house somewhere. Okay, there we go. So the next step is I'm going I have two colors here in the Gilder's paste that I'm going to be using. And this one is an antique gold, and this one is an actual blue patina. Now, I may not have to use this one um, because the base is already blue, but we'll see. We'll just see. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take the gold, this antique gold, and I'm just going to start hitting the edges of this. I'm getting all the high points 
that are in let's see they're in the um, the detail of the mold just like this and that's all I'm doing is just very lightly you know just brushing it across the surface just to get it on all those high points and in this process of doing patina you will find that you're going to go back and forth with the same colors you know a couple three times but that's just using the one color see how it already you know it's toned the blue down but it's still not the way I want it so before I go to the next step I'm going to do this to all the pieces because like I said I want these to all be the same and uh, just brush it on the high points and you can see when you do that how it brings out the detail in the in the um, in the clay from those molds again you can achieve this same effect with the acrylic paints just using the dry brush technique um, and just going over you know very lightly with a dry brush just the same as you're, I'm doing with my finger and the Gilders paste you can achieve the same technique so it's not like you have to have a whole um, stash of supply different types of supplies you can do it with whatever you have on hand and um, I actually had fun using the acrylic paints uh, making that piece it was kind of a fun experiment and most of what we do when we're creating is experimentation we get an idea in our head and we think ah I'm gonna try that and sometimes it comes out great sometimes not so great but that's how you learn and you grow and find those happy accidents that sometimes happen now I'm noticing that with this piece because it's so intricate and it is quite long um, you have to have a little bit more gentle touch with this because where it's connected by just these little small points right here and uh, if I used too much strength I could you know snap it but if I do there's always hot glue or E6000 um, to put it back together. So I'm just going to go over this lightly. And the reason I mentioned that you sometimes have to go, you know, you sometimes use a color three, four times sometimes until you achieve that look is because the next thing I'm going to do is to um, kind of lighten up this blue a little bit to get it the color that I want it to be. Um, and you can see, look at that, I just put one dab and I'm going over all of that one side with just one single dab. Oops, I've got little slits in my mat from letting my grandkids play. Okay, now if you use Gilder's paste, um, I have a little uh, tip for getting it because you can see it really um, does a number. Oh, see, I just snapped it. Yep, we're going to have to use E6000. I just told myself not to do it and I did it. Well, that's okay because you can see. Um, back to the tip, I use um, like a rag and I take some rubbing alcohol and just put some on the rag and just rub it off because that is like a wax base the um, Gilder's paste is a wax base so it doesn't come off with soap and water you need something you know like the alcohol so it takes it right off okay I'm not going to worry about this piece being broken I'll fix it later um, with some E6000 because it's it's a wonder that E6000 it's just funny that I mentioned being careful and then I broke it go figure I swear sometimes I'm like a bull in a china shop okay now I'm going to take the gesso again 
because I just want to tone that blue down a little bit. And this is where I'm going to use what I, you know, what I just mentioned as the dry brush technique. I'll start with this metal piece. And I'm just going to lightly go over this with the gesso just to tone that down just a little bit because it's a bit too bright for my liking. It's not the color that I wanted it to be, but you can see just by using that almost dry brush with the gesso and all I did is put just that tiny little bit and just if you have a paper towel or a rag or something just kind of uh, wipe it on there until you achieve that look that you want and you can keep going back and back you know over and over again um, the blue doesn't go away because I'm not putting on a heavy coat I'm just toning it down a little bit and this is where I said sometimes you have to go back over um, where you've added your your gilders paste or your paint to get those highlights back up. But can you see the difference in the two pieces now? Um, this with just the dry brush of the gesso and this one that doesn't have the dry brush on it yet. You see how just that little bit of paint toned that down and made it look a little more rustic. So that's what I'm going to do to all of these pieces including the one that I just broke. And I'm just, as you can see, just dabbing the brush off till it's almost dry. And then just going over really lightly. Let's just put that one separate. No, no point in trying to make it look like it's not broken when it is. See the difference? just from here to here and that's just using and I'm going back to my mat just to pick up a little bit more of the, the gesso and that's really all the gesso that you need when you're when you're doing this or you could use white acrylic paint if you don't have gesso it will work too I guess the big thing is just play experiment I mean seriously you're making these out of you know a few cents worth of clay so and you're not investing a lot so you have a lot of pardon me you have a lot of room to play and you know develop a technique that you like and the colors that you like that's that's why I like being able to mold my own things because it does give me that freedom to experiment and like I said you're not going out and buying a whole piece that is already done and then you know you've spent the money and you decide oh that's really not what I like this way you have the freedom to experiment and find that perfect color that you want to use And I'm just using a light, as you can see, a light dabbing motion um, just to tone that blue down. And see, if I'd used a lighter blue to start with, I might not have gotten the exact color that I wanted. Sometimes you have to use a little bit darker base coat and then just use your layers um, just to make sure I got the edges done here use your layering with your your paints to really achieve the color that you want and you can see right here I don't know if you can see it I'll hold it up that there are some areas where I've got more of the white and that's okay because it just adds to that aged look because when things age they don't age uniformly just look at ourselves. Well, I'll speak for myself. I'm certainly not aging uniformly. All kinds of weird stuff happens. I wake up every day and think, okay, what's going to be today's surprise? 
Um, that's just what happens with age. So don't try when you're doing this. Don't, don't go for perfection because the natural process of things is not perfection. Whether it's in nature or, or you know, human beings, um, there is no such thing as perfection. So this is one of those, those techniques that you can be sloppy. Um, you can, it doesn't have to be completely uniform or even. And in fact, you don't want it to be. You just kind of want it to be random. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. You just want it to be random. Just want to make sure when when you do that, you want to make sure that your brush is almost dry. Like, see, when I go on my finger, you can't hardly see any paint, and that's what you want on your brush when you're doing this dry brush technique. And see the more layers that you put on it, um, I'm just noticing this with the face, the more layers that you put on this piece, the more your details tend to pop out, like her face on this little, I guess it's a cherub holding this little shell. Um, the details tend to pop out the more layers you put on. Um, so that's another added benefit. Oh, I hope I don't lose my voice. It almost went right there. So as you can see, it's just a light touch <clears throat> with very little paint or gesso, whatever products you're using. And right now I'm just making sure that the edges um, match the top surface because these do get seen when you apply them to a piece and the top here of the shell a little tiny bit more and as you're working on these this layering um, to achieve your your aged look um, you can always go back um, after you've gotten things, you know, kind of uniform the way that you want them and you use your your different layers of color, you can always go back and add more gesso um, just to give it that not uniform or more random look when you're all done. Because you don't want these to look like pieces that you purchased. You want them to look like they have set out in the elements and aged and I think I am going to add a bit more of the gesso to this piece not a lot just kind of random I'm not going over the whole surface just kind of pouncing um, to achieve that randomness like that and I think I'm going to do that on here too well, that's what I mean. You just keep going back and forth with your colors and your layers until you get it the way that you are happy with it. And in this um, faux patina technique is just that. It's all personal preference um, as to what you like, the colors that you like, the look that you want to achieve. Um, that's all it is. So I'm going to go back with the... Um, the antique gold Let's start with this one and just again hit those surfaces like that just randomly not trying to go for uniform and I may even add a touch of that green because the patinas are um, you know they do have kind of a blue green look to them I may take some of that green um, that I used on the other pieces just to uh, give it a little more depth. 
not to hide the blue because I don't want to get rid of the blue. I like the blue, even though it might not have been at first the color that I wanted it to be. Um, I still like it. And toning it down with the um, gesso really helped to get me closer to the color that I was looking for. Okay, I think I am going to try just a little bit of that green, and this was a, a patio indoor outdoor paint that I've had forever. And the reason that I like this particular paint is because it's quite thin. Um, it's kind of watery almost. So as you can see, it's almost transparent. You can't see. Let me ding dong. Let me do it up here. You can see it's almost a watery color. So I'm just kind of going to dab this in spots around the piece just to add that little bit of green that um, is found in true patina. Not hiding the blue, but just adding another little um, depth to it. So you can see. Probably can't because the light is. Well, maybe it's not showing up, but it is. Um, just add a little bit more. Maybe that will show up better. But if I if I put it next to like say this piece here, let me bring the camera in a little bit more. Maybe you can see it that way. You can see the difference in the two with the green. You can see the green better there now. So there's that. And I'm just going to do the same thing, just dabbing it here and there to give it that random um, process that would look of the process that would happen in nature. As I said, nature is not perfect, neither are we, so we shouldn't want what we create to be perfect either. The beauty of creating is making it your own, making it unique, uh, making it to your liking, and it is also, beauty is subjective, and it's subjective to the eye of the beholder. So, you know, there may be you, those of you out there who are looking at this and go, hmm, that's ugly. And there may be others who, you know, think, wow, that's a really cool technique. I'm going to have to try that. And I encourage you to experiment. Just play. Play and have fun. And you might find that this technique is not for you. Or you might find, I'm going to patina everything in my house. And see, I'm just taking what's in the cap. You gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. My dog is whining. She wants to go outside. Um, I gotta pay attention to make sure I'm in frame here because I tend to get busy doing what I'm doing and not paying attention. Okay, ladies, I will be right Okay, back. sorry about that, but when nature calls, she calls, and I'm the only one here right now, so... I can't let the poor little pup have a full bladder. So there's that. I don't know if you guys can actually see. I think you can. The difference that this creates by adding that little bit of green on there. It gives it that more actual patina look. Um, okay. So we're just going to continue with this dry brush. And again, this is almost like a stain, this paint is. 
um, which I really like because it doesn't, it's got that opacity, opac you know it's opaque, I'm not even going to try to say that, because I'm going to sound like a total brain dead person, um, but it gives it that, you can see through the paint, leaving the blue, which is what I did not want to totally lose, visible. So the last piece we have to do with, oops, I got a little bit too much there. The last piece we have to do is the unplated brass. And again, just randomly dabbing the green here and there. And you're going to think I'm nuts, but I am going to go back over this yet again with the gesso you could do it with the white paint you could stop here if you're happy with the way that this looks and that's another wonderful thing about um, using this technique is that you can stop whenever you're happy or you can continue to add more and more layers um, to achieve that look that you want to get that's the fun thing about doing this and I really do like to do a patina because um, I like that creative process that, oh, it's almost there, or, okay, that didn't work out well, we got to start over again. And that's okay, because the more you do it, the more you get a feel for, you know, how you want to do it, and the colors that you want to use, and the layering, and, and I'm actually glad that I chose that really, you know, stark blue um, to show you how you can you know, tone it down and yet still achieve that that blue that I wanted to have for these pieces. Okay, so that is it for the green. And I am going to take my gesso, I think. I think what I'm going to do before I do the gesso, though, is just add a little... Um, a little bit more of this antique gold because some of it kind of got covered up in the process of layering. I don't need a lot though, I can still see most of it. I'm just kind of touching it here and there. done, or at least I'm done with the process, the technique that I wanted to show you and achieve the look that I wanted to achieve. Luckily it worked out well on the first try, but I'm just going to take a dry brush now, and let that one dry a little bit, and just randomly, you know, this is where you're going to need maybe just a tad bit more of the, the gesso or the white paint, and just kind of randomly just brushing over the pieces just a little bit. Just give it a little more depth again. And you can see I'm not being careful. I have no no pattern. It's all just completely random um, where you put this. Some areas are going to be heavier, some are going to be lighter, some aren't going to have it at all. Um, That's the beauty of doing these four patines. You play until you like it. Okay, ladies, there you have it. That is as simple as it gets with doing the, um, the faux patina. And you can see using, let me move this, so let me put it back. Well, I guess I'm not as far as I can go. Um, no, I'm not. See, the effect that you can achieve, all of these are unified now with the same colors and the same thing with these. They're all, even though they're different materials, you can achieve the exact same effect 
on your materials. So you can see the difference in the colors um, depending on what base color you use. Um, you know, make sure that on your clay pieces you cover it with um, the gesso first. Um, you could even take um, some thin down brown paint if you wanted to to give it even more of an aged look. Um, I was just looking at these pieces and thinking how pretty that would look if it had just a little tiny bit of brown just to age it a little bit more. But play. I guess that's the whole point of this. Just play with your pieces. Um, if you don't like a color, gesso it and start over. Just experiment. And with your clay pieces, I encourage you to get these molds. Um, as I said in my other video um, on how to use these molds, these are phenomenal molds. I, I cannot say enough good things about these, seriously. I've experimented with a lot of different molds, and these are by far the best I have ever used. You can see the intricacy. Oh, I got that word out. Yay me. Um, of this mold and the detail that's in it. And I swear to you, I just molded this and then just took it and, you know, maneuvered it and just used my finger just to lightly pull it out and let it fall onto a, a flat surface so that it can dry. And you can see there's absolutely not a drop of clay in there, and I use no releasing agents. Um, Creating with Details has, I believe, six different molds, um, the Prima molds. They're called the IOD molds. And these are perfect for furniture, for, you know, mixed media, for cards, uh, you know, any kind of altering projects that you want to add some, you know, maybe some textured embellishments to. These are perfect. So, ladies, I would like to tell you that if you would like to order the molds and the clay or the um, unplated brass, please use um, coupon code ROBIN, R-O-B-B-I-N, 20, um, when ordering from Creating with Details, and that will give you a 20% discount off your entire order of $25 or more. Um, and that's a great value, ladies, because... The prices at Creating with Details are already amazing, but when you get to add a little bit of a discount in there, it makes it even better. And what person doesn't like a discount? So ladies, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up, uh, share, and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, be kind to each other, love one another, and God bless. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.